Hi everyone, it's Mike Pohatu here, and today I wanted to give you a run through of the installation of Bird's Nest Explorer. Now, when you purchase your license for Bird's Nest Explorer, uh, you'll get access to the members area where you can download the um, package that will come as a zip file. Um, and as if we unpack that here, you'll see a number of files and folders. The main one we care about here is the managed installer, and we'll run that up in a second. Uh, just before you get underway though, there's going to be a couple of things you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need two passwords, uh, one for the Neo4j database password. Now the, that account is the equivalent of the SA uh, account in SQL. Uh, and you're also going to need uh, a second password which is for the service account that's going to be used for Business Explorer to connect to the database. So I've just created a whole bunch of gibberish here. Uh, just by mashing the keyboard and we'll use those as our passwords. Uh, the other thing you're going to need are two Active Directory groups. Uh, one is for Business Explorer administrators uh, and another one for Business Explorer users. So I've already got two domain groups created, one Bird's Nest admins and another one Bird's Nest users. Now this last one is an optional, um, but it's something I would recommend, and that's having a modern browser installed. Internet Explorer will work with Business Explorer, um, but a modern browser will function better. And also the Neo4j database console uh, also can be run with Internet Explorer, but under our testing has shown a few issues. So it's just much easier if you install something more modern like Microsoft Edge or Chrome. In this case, um, I've built my lab server that we're going to be using here to, do, to run this demo. Uh, it's a fresh build, and the only thing I've done to it is install Microsoft Edge. So those are the details that we need to get underway. So let's go into our in installer and run up the managed installer. Accept the elevation prompt. Now the managed installer is designed to be run from a bare metal build with nothing really on it to get you from woe to go as quickly and easily as possible. So we'll have a quick look at the view. Uh, you've got some tabs along the top uh, for your various stages. You've got an output window here, so logging information and status of the various install steps will be shown here. Uh, for example, we've also got, already got a warning here to say that the system has less than the recommended amount of RAM. And we've also got a couple of options down here at the bottom. You'll normally only use those uh, if you're getting in contact with support because you've got some issues. So let's skip over to the licensing tab. And usual story, we accept the license for the 20 road managed installer and for Bird's Nest Explorer um, and also for the third party um, libraries and components that are used to build uh, Bird's Nest Explorer which are open source licensed products. That will unlock the install and post install tabs. Now from here essentially you've got a list of dependencies and then a list of components that make up Business Explorer itself, followed by a bunch of post install steps. And all you really have to do is work from top to bottom where something's not installed, you can click the install action uh, to get that uh, item installed. There's a couple of things worth noting. Uh, certain pieces will have dependencies. So for example, the Neo4j database requires the Java uh, to be installed and it also needs the root folder installed so it has somewhere to go. If it's a hard dependency uh, the option will actually be greyed out until that dependency is installed but in some cases you'll have a soft dependency so for example Neo4j has a soft dependency on the open JDK this item here. Neo4j needs a Java version um, but for example, if you already have in your enterprise um, environment, say an Oracle um, Java license and you want to use that instead, then you're more than welcome to do that. So as long as you have a version of Java installed, it'll be fine. Uh, so that will be a soft dependency that will get unlocked after the root folder is installed. The Java version won't block you. So let's just start and go from top to bottom. So we've got our 
IIS role and this is just the usual Windows Server role and its configuration. This is a lab server so it's not the quickest thing in the world so we'll pause the video here and we'll come back when this has finished. Okay so that step has finished so moving along we'll get to the .NET Core, co .NET core hosting component so if we install that and that will launch the installer. And that's now done. And you'll see here that there's a warning saying, please reboot before using the Bird's Nest Explorer console. Now you can actually complete the install um, if you want to, but you just won't be able to use the Bird's Nest Explorer console until you give that server a reboot. So I might as well do that now. So I'll reboot the server uh, and then we'll come back once that's finished. Okay, so the server's rebooted and I've just opened up the managed installer again. We'll just bounce through here and accept the licenses. And now we can continue. So let's install our Java version. And that's done. So that's all our dependencies installed and we can move on to the main Business Explorer install itself. So first things first, let's create the Bird's Nest Explorer root folder. Now this will default to C Bird's Nest, uh, but you can change this to pretty much wherever you like if you've got a D drive you want to install on or C program files. Um, this will create the folder and then set the permission so it will disable inheritance and only allow administrators to the server access to the folder. So we'll just leave this as default, so we'll click create. The rest of our components will update themselves and now let's go on to installing Neo4j. Now for those of you that don't know, Neo4j is a graph database rather than a relational database uh, and it makes it perfect for this type of application. Uh, so that's going to uh, run its install now and once that install is finished it's going to actually automatically trigger the post install steps. Uh, for setting up the Neo4j database as well. Okay, so we've been given our first prompt for the credentials for our Neo4j password or Neo4j database account password. So we'll paste that in there and the service account password as well. Now the main thing to be aware of with the Neo4j password is it currently doesn't support the double quotes character. So if you have one of those, just remove it. All the other characters should be fine. Uh, the service count, um, you can use whatever characters you like. Save. And that's been completed. So what it's done there is it's created the two accounts and it's also done a import of the default data into the Neo4j database for Business Explorer. So that is the, say for example, the built-in groups and the built-in uh, users that are standard on Windows machines and Windows environments. So now we can move on to Business Explorer scanners. Now this is just a straight unpack, so this is fairly quick. And then we come on to the Business Explorer console. So let's click install there. Now that's going to go and set up uh, a site in IIS and configure it appropriately. It's also going to generate uh, and set a self-signed SSL certificate for use with the site. Um, we would recommend as, um, as standard to use a certificate from a trusted authority, whether that's your internal enterprise PKI or from a trusted certificate authority such as DigiCert or someone of the same like. And that's now complete. So that's our main install done. So now we'll move on to the post install. Now we can see already that our Neo4j database setup has been configured already. So the next thing we can do is the Business Explorer console configuration. Now this is going to set up our access and authentication methods for the uh, Business Explorer console. So that's going to be authentication against Active Directory. 
the name is the name that's going to um, appear in the drop down list for Burst Nest Explorer for the authentication source. So for now, let's just call that AD for short. And I'm running this on my home lab. So we'll use the correct details for that. For the domain, you can either use the domain name or if you want to target the authentication against a specific domain controller or for example a DNS alias, you can use that uh, in this um, option as well. And the container DN is usually the root of the domain, but the main thing that we're interested in here is that it is um, the root where it's going to search for these two groups. Now my domain supports SSL, so I'm going to enable that so I can use LDAPS. And our admin groups, I've actually got admin groups that match these names already, so I'm just going to leave the defaults. And then the timeout in seconds is the amount of time that the console uh, has no activity before the authentication will reprompt the user. So we click save there and that's now done. Now the Neo4j scanner's configuration, if we click configure, will go through and complete automatically because the details for that have actually come, uh, you've been given, the details have been supplied earlier on in the install so it can configure that automatically. If you have closed the managed installer and reopened it um, at a later point and some of those steps have already been completed, it may prompt you again for the uh, service account password. So you put that one in if prompted. Now we come to the AD scanner configuration. This is the actual domain or Active Directory domain ingestion. So the, the domain that you want to scan. So for this one we are going to scan the same domain. So we'll use the same details here. SSL again. The timeout before the scanner will actually timeout if it can't connect. Now the username and password, you don't actually need these if you're running Business Explorer on a domain server. Uh, if you're running it on a non-domain server, you're going to need to provide details so that you can actually bind to the domain before you can do your scan job. So you can provide those here if you need them. In my case, I'm running on a domain server, so I don't need them. So those are optional. So we'll click Save, and we're done. Now that's the main install finished. We've got a couple of uh, optional things here at the end. So I'll just close out of that because we don't need it anymore. So the first one is Delete IIS Default Site. So that is just to do with, as it says, the default website that comes pre-installed with IIS. Now if you actually go and look in IIS, you'll see that Bird's Nest Explorer creates its own website called Bird's Nest Dash Console. Uh, if this is only going to be used for this function, you don't actually need that default website anymore. So the installer just gives you a nice, quick and easy way to run that. So if we come back over here and refresh, default website does not exist, which is what we would expect. So that's now gone. Now the Windows Long Path support, this is to do with the file system scanner. Uh, the default uh, Windows Path has a default character limit. Um, in the vis yeah, there we go, no longer than 260 characters. That can be a problem if, for example, you need to fully qualify a domain name and the path becomes longer than expected or a user is mapped deeper into the file system than you would be if you're connecting at the root. And so they can create weird and wonderful long file names and file paths and then you have issues scanning them. This will remove that limitation. The character limit becomes much, much longer. So it's something that I recommend turning on. So I'm going to run that. It's just setting a registry key. Um, again, system restarts required. So it may be a case that when you're doing your .NET 
core hosting install when you needed a restart, you might just want to leave it till the end. It's really up to you. Now the last step here is gather database memory recommendations. Now this is about the Neo4j database and it is a tool for querying your system, having a look at the stats and the amount of memory and giving you some recommendations for configuration. A lot of the time, uh, depending on what you're doing with the database, it may just work fine out of the box. Uh, but if not, you might need to do a little bit of fine tuning um, with the memory settings inside of the Neo4j configuration. This tool runs that for you. And so it will make some recommendations. If you have a look, bit more of a read through here, it'll give you some detail on what it's talking about. Those are the settings that you'll need to have a look at and there's some recommendations from the tool. Um, and it also gives you, here's where the config file is to set that detail. So that's something you might want to have a look at to fine tune your database to make it perform a bit better, especially if you've got a large environment, you're going to give it a lot of heavy use. Um, but I have seen this work on a really light server with a really light um, memory configuration and it's been fine. Um, but it's generally best to make it perform as best as you can. So that's the main install complete. So now if we go to our browser and let's see about logging into our console. So we go to HTTPS localhost. Now you'll get a certificate warning because we're using a self-signed certificate that's completely expected. Again, we'd recommend using a certificate from a trusted provider. And here we are at the main login page. You've got your name that you set for your Active Directory um, settings inside of the console setup. And I'm going to log in with my user account that is a member of the Bird's Nest Admins group. And here we are at the portal page. Now I'll just quickly note a couple of things. Um, firstly, we've got total number of nodes. All of these are so your built-in groups, built-in users. So that's the Neo4j database import that we did. It'll give you a listing of the active plugins. So we've got the active directory and the file system plugins are the main ones. Um, we're also including the beta version of the SCCM console with version one. Uh, that list will expand over time. And the other thing um, worth noting is the indexes. Uh, this will become especially important um, if you start writing your own um, plugins or ingesting your own custom business data. This type of thing will be covered in a later video. So the main other thing is that there isn't actually any data in here yet. So we've configured it all, but there's nothing really um, that we've ingested of any particular use yet. About the only thing we might see, even the AD empty groups is, is empty. So now what we need to do is run a scan. So let's go and have a look in our bird's nest install and have a look at what we've got. So see bird's nest, which is our root folder, you'll get prompted to get access because it's only for administrators. And here's our console version one. Now the main thing you're going to care about is the app settings.json. This is where all of the settings that you configured um, as part of the install will be set for the console. And the other thing will be the plugins folder if you come to adding or customizing console, um, console plugins in future. There's the Neo4j database. And here's the scanners. Now this is where you're going to do all your ingestion. Again, we've got our config files. There's the Active Directory config, which we set up. And here's also the config to connect to the Neo4j database. And then there's a bunch of example files as well um, for creating your own um, scanner configurations. Documentation, obviously, is also a good source to build those up. So the first thing we're going to do, let's run an AD scan.
and you'll see it now processing through my home lab domain and we're finished now my home lab is quite small uh, and there's not really a huge amount in it so if we start having a look at the say some of the reports there's some of the default uh, active directory groups but it's actually a fairly small domain that I do for my own custom work so what you can do is you can run a secondary scan against another domain so if we just create another configuration and let's call this adconfig-demo.json and if we edit that you'll see that the configuration is actually very simple and we saw all those same settings that we saw before except now we're going to point it at the demo.local domain now this is a domain that I've built with a whole bunch of essentially random randomized data to give a, a sense of a data set that's a, at a little bit more of a scale it's not ginormous it's around about 10,000 users um, and about 200,000 odd um, you know member of relationships but I'll give you a good idea of some of the data that can come out now this one however doesn't support SSL so I'll just set that to false and then the other things can be set or left alone so now we have a second config and now we can run this with a command line option to pass in a specific config so if we use slash config colon adconfig demo.json go Now you'll notice as progress goes through here that there's all of these dots. Each one of those dots is writing a thousand items to the database. So just to give you a sense of the scale of the data that's going through, so the group member relationships will often have a much more um, of these dots going along during the progress than many of the other options. So that's quite normal. and our scans completed so just having a quick look at this output n plus r plus n minus r minus means nodes added relationships added nodes removed relationships removed and then properties set is the number of properties that are set on any of those items so you can see here that we have added 10,000 user nodes, 10,000 groups, and 203,000-ish relationships. So a reasonable number. Um, and just from a timing point of view, I've seen in production environments, um, say 25,000 users, 25,000 groups, an average sort of run time is around about two minutes. Uh, this lab's not the quickest thing in the world, and it's only against a single server. So um, slightly different, but we're not talking um, orders of magnitude difference here so we're done so one thing you'll notice is that there's a press any key to exit or press enter to exit uh, at the finish that's so that the prompt will remain so that you can look at the output before it closes usually you'll want to set this up with a scheduled task so what you can do is add the slash batch option at the end And it will automatically complete so that's something you want to use when you want to set this up as a scheduled task so that's it that's our data ingested so now if we come into our console and have a look at our reports let's have a look at AD group loops and we found a bunch of groups that are in a loop now in this particular view that may not show you the information you need so you can click on open in visualizer and you can straight away see that are groups that are in a loop and how they are looped um, and in what order some of the other information you want, might want to get out if we come back here to our reports things like the AD deep paths which is a way of seeing groups that have a deep chain for lack of a 
better description. So if we have a look at these groups in a list, you'll see that you have this long chain of membership uh, that's going to potentially lead to some unexpected behavior, potentially, depending on how you've designed it. So that's the kind of stuff you'll get um, straight out of the box. So that's the um, core setup. Again, if we come back into our server information, uh, the details haven't updated yet, but if you click on the refresh button down here at the bottom, you'll get the, the stats updated from the server. And you can see now we have 2380 computers, some foreign security principles, which are the relationships between the two domains um, and how they connect to each other, um, your numbers for AD groups, AD users, etc. So that's the setup from start to finish that gets you from a bare server to a business explorer installation scanned against Active Directory and authentication and everything working. The next steps from here are setting up your file system scanner so that you can do um, interrogating file system permissions. I'll do that as part of a separate video because it takes a little bit more um, explanation just to make sure that you don't um, introduce unexpected load. Um, and then there's also going to be videos for um, using the visualizer, uh, which are things that I've just briefly touched on here. So how you do searching, how you do advanced searches, a little bit more detail about reports and all of that kind of thing. So keep an eye out for those videos. I'll post them as soon as they are available. Uh, Business Explorer, if it's not out as you watch this video, it will be out very soon. If you have any queries, or would like a bit more information, please get in touch via the 20road.com website and I'll be glad to help you out. Thanks very much and have a great day.